Uh, good morning to everyone. My name is Greg, and today I will talk a little bit about my work. The main purpose of my work is to obtain the orcos profiles of different uh, GABS populations in clusters. Uh, the name of my work is a study of the kinematics of populations of galaxies in clusters through genes analysis. Well, galaxies are formed by dust, stars, gas, and dark matter. A, uh, there are a large number of galaxies in the universe uh, with many properties and shapes. But uh, to facilitate our work, we tend to classify galaxies in categories. Uh, here I show two galaxy, galaxy classification. The Hubble classification, where we classify galaxies with respect to their morphology, and the diagnostic diagram classification, where we classify galaxies with respect to the main agent responsible for the ionization of the gas in the galaxies. Uh, the galaxies tend to come together to form structures uh, uh, known as clusters and groupers. The clusters are the biggest virulent structures in the universe. They can have hundreds to thousand galaxy members. Uh, we think that the environment of a cluster can affect uh, the galaxies. Uh, two main processes like mergers, galaxy harassment, galaxy cannibalism, uh, pressure stripping, and starvation. And we think the way that this process can affect the galaxy uh, depends on the R of the galaxies in the clusters. Because in this work, we study how is the R profile of different galaxy populations in clusters. Uh, to do this, we use the genes analysis, uh, more specifically the equation 1 and the equation 2. The equation 1 is the uh, Gene's equation in spherical coordinates, if the equations two links the observable profile uh, velocity project, projected velocity dispersion and projected numerical density profile. And the beta parameter is the parameter the velocity anisotropy. And uh, we know how is the beta profile for many populations because uh, he uh, giving us information about how the art of profiles of different galaxy populations. Uh, our sample was obtained from Tempel, and we select the only clusters without substructures with uh, 20 or more galaxies. And we obtain the flux and the equivalent width of the emission flight from the SDSA database. Uh, using the diagnostic diagrams BPT and 1, well, simultaneously, we classify uh, the galaxies in four categories. They are star forming, transition, AGN, and key ascents. Uh, some galaxies cannot be classified by this method. Uh, to then use a second method uh, based only in the equivalent width of the emission line. And finally, we put uh, all the galaxies together in a simulated clusters uh, by normalizing their distance and velocities. Uh, after this, uh, we calculated the per project that profiles the velocity dispersion and the numerical density. To do this, we use the equations uh, for and we adjust analytical profiles to them in the equations 5, 6, and 7. Uh, using this uh, and the uh, import, uh, hypothesis that the TSN population has isotropic orbits, or that means your beta profile is zero, you can get the eight equation, and using this equation, we can get the nine equations, uh, can give us the mass profile for the cluster. And using these mass profiles, we can get the beta profile for the other populations. Uh, to obtain the beta profile, we, we resolve the, system, the equation system uh, with the equations 10 and, and 11. You obtain the beta profile for the other three populations. Uh, here I will show some results of my work. Here is the galaxy classification and the number of the galaxies in each category in the tables. 
In these two plots, I show the guard's position in the bit, the uh, left and the one right, po uh, position of the guards in both diagrams, uh, preserving our classifications. We can see uh, in these plots that our classification using simultaneously both diagrams is more precise, is more accurate than using uh, only one diagram. Here is the projected number density profile for the four populations, and we can see uh, that for the KSN and AGN populations, the E profile has more higher values in the center region, unlike the star farming and transition population. Here is the uh, profile of project tech, uh, velocity dispersion for the four populations, and we can see that the star farm transition and AGN population have more higher values of sigma in almost our area, uh, unlike the KSN population. Using the uh, projected number density profile, we can get the number density profile, and I will show here, uh, for the four populations. We uh, again see that the KSN and AGN population have more higher values of NIDA in almost our area, unlike star farming uh, and transition. Using the sigma p, sigma p, uh, ni, uh, and e profile, we can get the mass profile for the cluster e uh, shoulder. This profile uh, to obtain, then we uh, need the hypo hypothesis that the KSN population have isotropic orbits. Uh, that means your beta profile is zero in our radio. Using this mass profile, we can get the beta profile for the other three populations, and they show here. Uh, analyzing this image, we can see that the AGN, star farm, and transition population have uh, uh, more positive value values of beta D. Beta, uh, for uh, our area, uh, if this indicates that these three populations have more radio orbs than the KSN population. Using this uh, profile, we can invert the genes equations, uh, E obtain and E obtain uh, the project velocity dispersion profile for the population, and they show here. This profile can give us information about how accurate is your two minutes, it, uh, is your better profile. And you can see some populations, your better profile uh, is more precise than for others. Uh, the principal conclusion, the main conclusions uh, about my work is that the KSN population have more isotropic guards and they are more uh, density in the center regions. This indicates that these populations resist uh, more long time in the clusters, and because of this, she has uh, it has more isotropic arcs and is more, it's closer to the equilibrium than the other populations. The results for star form transition and AGN populations uh, indicates that three populations have more uh, radial arcs and uh, resists uh, in the outskirts of the clusters. And because of this, this indicates that these three populations have not yet reached the equilibrium with the cluster potential. And furthermore, the results for star farming and transition populations indicates that the star farming, uh, the transition population is more close to the equilibrium than the star farming population because the star farming population have more radio orbits. Thanks for attention.